In 2011, one of the most eminent archaeologists working in the city of David, Elishukron, made an unbelievable discovery. Near the location of the Gihon Spring, Shukron found the remains of the mysterious structure dating from a period much earlier than the city of David itself. Archaeologists found an altar, wine and olive press, and a stone monument called Emetseva. Shukron himself openly states that the find is nothing more than the first temple, or as the archaeologist himself says, Temple Zero, much preceding Solomon's temple. According to the scientist, this temple was built for God in ancient Salem of Melchizedek. In today's episode, we will take a look at this discovery and consider its possible consequences. So let's begin. Melchizedek is undoubtedly one of the most mysterious biblical figures. Mentioned in only three books of the Bible, we have very little information about Melchizedek. However, even those small bits of memory of Melchizedek lead many to conclude that he was a figure of unique value. We gain the following information about Melchizedek from the three passages in the Bible. The name Melchizedek means King of Righteousness in Hebrew. Melchizedek lived in Salem at the time of Abraham. Salem means peace, so Melchizedek was also the King of Peace. Melchizedek had no parents or bloodline. Melchizedek was a king and priest of God Most High, El Elyon. He blessed Abraham and Abraham tithes him. Melchizedek establishes his priestly order, preceding and exceeding the Levitical order. Melchizedek is superior to Aaron and Abraham. His priesthood endures forever. Indeed, the listed qualities position Melchizedek as one of the most influential figures in the Bible. But let us return to the narrative itself described in Genesis 14, where we read about the legendary encounter between Abraham and Melchizedek. The Bible describes Abraham departing from Hebron on a rescue mission of his nephew Lot. With his army, Abraham reaches Dan, where he saves Lot and drives the enemy to today's Syria territory. On the way back in the Sheva Valley, also known as the King's Valley, which we associate as the Kidron Valley, Abraham meets the king of Sodom, and Melchizedek. Then we read, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. Now he was a priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. He gave him a tenth of all. Okay, but someone might say that Salem does not necessarily mean Jerusalem. While the name Jerusalem is related to Salem, that doesn't mean anything yet. The city of peace, or Salem, is identified with Jerusalem because of Psalm 76, that connects God's tabernacle in Salem with Zion, and Zion itself is synonymous with Jerusalem. In the psalm we read, His tabernacle is in Salem, his dwelling place also is in Zion. Looking also at Israel's geography, 
the road to Hebron that Abraham returned led through today's Jerusalem. Abraham returns again to this area to undergo God's trial with his son Isaac. But that's a story for another time. By the end of the 19th century, many scholars and liberal biblical theologians questioned the existence of King David, and even more, the heroes that were before that. The situation began to change when General Sir Charles Warren, in 1867, started to work in the Palestine Exploration Fund, which led to many important archaeological discoveries in the areas controlled by the Ottoman Empire. Warren began the first severe excavations around the Temple Mount. As Muslims forbade working on the Temple Mount, Warren's crew headed south to the Temple Mount to inspect the area. The result was unbelievable, as it led to the discovery of the legendary city of David. His most famous finding was the water well, now known as Warren Shaft, which connected the entire network of water tunnels that provided Jerusalem at various times in water. Today the City of David area is the most excavated in Israel. Thanks to archaeologists such as Eli Shukron, many discoveries have been made to prove the biblical narrative credibility. Note those two photos comparing the area of the city of David. On the left we have a photo from the Ottoman period and on the right we have a photo taken in the 21st century. Notice the big difference in Palestine buildings that greatly limited the archaeological work. In contrast look at the massive excavations that were carried out in this area where no settlements were formed initially. Despite the obvious settlement difficulties, the city of David is one colossal excavation site. Today hardly anyone questions the thesis that this is where David established the capital of his kingdom. But a 2011 discovery by the leading archaeologist Eli Shukron could take the Bible authority to the next level. Can we say that this temple remains are a witness to the first ever built temple to the God of Abraham? Shukron says that the building oldest parts are at least 5,000 years old. The archaeologist also believes that when Abraham made his way to Salem, the building was certainly already there. The excavation includes four small rooms next to each other. There is a small room with an olive or grape press on the right side. Immediately to its left side there is another room at the back of which there is a small square altar with a long drained channel. This channel most likely served as an outflow of blood from animal sacrifices. At the far end of the building is another room with a strange V-shaped markings on the floor that could have been used to place a wooden installation that would hold animals for sacrifice. You can even see the cat holes used to tie the cords that hold the animals in the walls. But the most fantastic find is at the back of the center room where one vertical stone stands straight amid a foundation of smaller rocks. This simple stone was the center place of worship in Jerusalem over 4,000 years ago. Remembering the story of Melchizedek meeting with Abraham, which according to the biblical narrative took place in this place and in a period from which the monument comes, 
it can be concluded that this ancient temple is a testimony to the cult of monotheism from the time of biblical patriarchs. It would be the oldest monument of this type, showing that monotheism existed many centuries before Israel's creation. We see a similar example of such worship in the story of Jacob in Genesis 28. We read that in the place he called Bethel, Jacob erected a stone vertically, which he anointed with oil. Perhaps Jacob was inspired by his grandfather Abraham meeting with Melchizedek many years ago. After all, such a type of stone arrangement and anointing oil presses were present in Melchizedek's temple. Especially for you, I made an animation showing what this place could have looked like in the days of Abraham. During the excavations in the city of David, archaeologists found no walls in Salem. It would fit well with the name of the town, which means peace. On the other hand, several caves were found at the bottom of the hill where people originally lived. The temple itself was above the Gihon Spring, which flowed from under the mountain, and in later times was not visible to the naked eye, because it was built with protective walls and led to number of cisterns collecting water for the city. In the first room we see signs on the floor, the purpose of which is still under debate. What do you think they were for? Do you have an idea? Let me know. You can also see a press for wine or olive oil. In the second room we see the so-called Metzivach, a simple narrow stone placed on a stone base. It was the central place of worship during the time of Melchizedek. In the next sector you can see an altar and a place for animal sacrifices. It is worthy to mention that only kosher animal bones were found around the Gihon Spring. We can also observe the blood drainage channels from the blood of animals killed as sacrifice and the tanks where the blood was drained. In the last room an olive or wine press was found. To end this episode I would like to present a few conclusions that arise in connection with this discovery. First, even before the advent of Israel, Jerusalem was a unique place where only the Most High God was praised, El Elyon. The Bible from the very beginning to the end of the world sees Jerusalem as the center of God's plan. Second, this discovery reaffirms the Bible narratives from the very distant times. Third, the story of Melchizedek and Abraham shows the continuity of the biblical narrative. Melchizedek greeted Abraham with bread and wine in the presence of whom they glorified God. Today, both Jews and Christians use these two elements bread and wine, in the celebration of Shabbat and the Lord's Supper. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, I encourage you to comment and share this video. This helps a lot. Or you can subscribe to this channel to stay informed about the next monthly episodes on the history of Jerusalem. See you soon.